I get a lot of comments on social media when I post videos of shooting, whether it's flat range, punching holes in paper, doing scenario work around vehicles, all that stuff. There's always critics talking about what's the point of doing this or that. I'm gonna take you through two of the three main types of training that we have to prepare for that life or death situation. The first is flat range shooting holes in paper, right? That can be cold start drills. There's a lot of really great cold start drills on the market uh, that, are, that are put out by some really awesome, awesome people. And then we have scenario work, which is putting our, our skills to use in a scenario that is a make-believe scenario. You know, suspend the, uh, disbelief. Here's a, here's a scenario that you have to shoot your way out of. That's the second thing we have, to, we have to work with. And the third thing is force on force. And that is taking what we learned from our flat range poking holes and what we learned from taking that into scenario work and then putting it into work with force on force. That means somebody else is shooting back at you. And even then, our critics are gonna say, but there's not, there's not life or death situation. Yeah, it hurts and you don't wanna get shot and you don't wanna lose, but you still don't have that life or death situation. So even all three of the types of training that we have to do still aren't gonna train us perfectly for that moment. But what we have is we have multiple tools to learn and to put into our toolbox so that, God forbid, we need them one day, we have those skills. So I'm gonna take you first through our Neomag cold start drill. This is using our target that, that we ship our products in, most of our products in, has a target on the inside. What we're gonna do is on the buzzer, we're going to draw out and we need to place four shots in this A box. It's about the, about the size of a, of a postcard, it's a little smaller than that. Then we're going to reload on the move back to seven yards and place two headshots into the A, B head box here, which again, about the size of my thumb square. It's pretty small. This is flopping around in the wind too, so we'll see how that goes. What this does is this is going to work a few things. It's gonna work our draw. I need to make sure that I get a clean draw, good purchase on the gun, because to rattle off four shots, I need to be able to control my gun, the recoil, to keep all those shots in a relatively small space. The next thing it's gonna do is gonna work on a reload while moving. And we can do that backpedaling, we can turn around. In this drill, the point is to do this as fastly and accurately as possible. For me, I've found that turning around and moving to the second point, I'm gonna find the spot faster and I'm less likely to trip over my feet while backpedaling. So it's safer and faster. So I'm going to turn around, run to the seven yard point while doing a reload. So I'm also working on manipulating my, my firearm and doing a reload while moving, which is a whole, a whole nother skill set. Then I need to set on my feet, press out, settle my gun, and press off two very accurate shots at seven yards out of small target. This is doing, again, this is doing several things. Are any of these useful in a self-defense scenario? We'll look at that next. Let's go ahead and shoot this. All right, let's go look at the target. I think I might have thrown my first headshot. All right, my time was 697. All four shots here. One, I missed one of my headshots. I think I sent it right over the top. So shooting a red dot, I need to be thinking about my offset a little bit. I normally put my, put my dot right here and just let the target, let the bullet hit right here. And I didn't, so. But you can see that drill took me through several skill sets in a very short set of time. Let's take you through a scenario that I've set up here. So again, Suspend disbelief, and let's look at a possible scenario where I might need all those skill sets. I just pulled up to, my, to the gas station, to the pump here. I look around real quick, but I don't see anything. I've got, let's say I do a poor job of, of searching my surroundings. I got a blind spot right here. I don't see anything right there, which there's a target right behind this blind spot. And out this side, I just don't see anything either. I do a poor job. I go to get out, and there's a guy right here that is being very aggressive. I tell him stop, stop. He doesn't stop, he keeps approaching. I need to draw out, shoot him until he drops. At this point, I don't see anything else and I'm gonna start moving. I'm gonna turn around, come to the back here where I can get to my phone, 
I can call 911, I can do a administrative reload just to make sure I'm topped off. And you know, I just shot four shots. Why not go ahead and top off? I think I have time. Next thing I know, there's another person appears out of here that's running at me. I need to place two really well placed shots to take out that, that bad guy right there. So this is, again, this is just a real simple scenario. Of, these things may happen at a gas station. There's a lot of videos online that you can watch of attacks at gas stations where people just show up out of nowhere. People run up on the person getting out, half paying attention, maybe even paying attention, but there's a lot of blind spots at a gas station. You have vehicles, you have pumps, you have all kinds of things in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this scenario and we'll see how this relates to the, to the drill. Whoa, 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 stop! All right, one, two, three, four. Missed one there. So you can see what adding adrenaline, again, I'm not like hyped up or anything, but I'm around my vehicle that I dearly love and I really don't want to shoot it. And I got a camera and I got all things kind of things happening. So it does add a little bit of stress. And I'm also trying to do it fast for you guys, but you can see how just adding a little bit of adrenaline creates some misses, creates some of those things. That's what a scenario is going to involve. The third thing that we have to work with to train is force on force. Well, I don't, don't have anybody out here today to work with me on force on force. We have some fantastic instructors around the industry like ShivWorks that works on hand-to-hand, -hand, force on force, shooting, fighting, and those sorts of things. You can go and train with those guys if you really wanna take your crawl and your walk to a run position. But each one of these has a very specific skill that you're working on. We start with our crawl, which is just the fundamentals of working on things. If you're, think of basketball, of working on free throws. The pros spend countless hours shooting free throws. That's what paper drills are, are for us. Then you have scrimmages. That's kind of what this is. It's taking those basic skill sets, putting them into practice in a, a scrimmage type situation where there's still no danger of getting shot back or anything, but I need to be moving around things and I need to be placing good shots on, on targets. And then there's game time, sort of. Game, you could argue game time is actually a life or death situation. But as far as training goes, game time is force on force. So when you see other people training, it's a great idea to question why are you doing that? What is the pros and cons of doing that? Those are great things to ask. But then we have to try to get out of our own heads and try to get away from our preconceived scenarios that we see ourselves having to shoot our way out of. And whether you get those from videos or just your own surroundings and you make up things that might happen, there's a hundred different scenarios that I could come up with where I need to shoot two targets from three and seven yards around my vehicle. This one just relates directly with our cold start drill. How much time should you be spending on flat range versus scenario versus force on force? You would never take a new shooter and just throw them into force on force without learning the basics first. So, and you would never even take a mediocre shooter. I, I'm, I would never want to just once a year go and shoot force on force and not spend time doing this and I've been training for a long time. So really think hard about these things. Don't, don't hesitate to ask questions when you see whoever, instructors or, or other companies posting video of being out shooting. Guys, thank you so much for watching this. I appreciate your likes, your follows, and your comments. We'll see you guys next time.